<laughs> Welcome to another edition of After the Whistle. We are in November. What are we, November 3rd? Yeah, November 3rd. You just had the election yesterday. Got a new mayor elect. Got some new people on the school committee. A lot of stuff happening. A lot of stuff happening. I'm here. Todd's here. Just, like always. We just here. Before we get started, I, I had an interesting weekend. Uh, so, you know... You know, sometimes girls get their boyfriends lined up to get beat up by their actions that they do. Yeah. I, I so it. I had a situation on Saturday. Was the liquor involved? No, no, there was no liquor involved. Sober? So I went, I went somewhere. I got, I got two things for, for Saturday. I went somewhere, and I'm doing my thing. I'm looking at my phone trying to figure out something. And as I'm waiting for the servers to come to talk to me, these two couple come by. No, they go one way. Then they come back out. They're confused about something, or they were meeting some people, I'm assuming. Then the lady just walks by. There's a whole lot of space between me, her, and just the whole place. And she bumps me. Just walks by and bumps me. And I just stopped. I didn't say nothing. But then I just put my head up and I just looked. And she kept walking and not saying anything, not even excuse me or nothing. And I'm just looking. And I guess the boyfriend sensed that something ignorant was about to come out of my mouth. So he, he had to apologize for her. And I just looked at him, I'm just like, you shouldn't be apologizing for her not knowing how to act. Like, yeah, that's a, that's a problem with, you know, some women think like their man is Superman, and your man don't want to fight for you. He just wants to enjoy his time out. Yeah. Like, yeah, and I, I've had to tell some women in my day, like, don't, don't let your mom get their ass. We just gonna chill out. Yeah, that so, was my, my, my biggest thing with that is she legit just kept on walking as if she didn't bump, she didn't just bump me. She just kept on going and I'm just like. And, and unfortunately, you know, in my life, I deal with some women that have no accountability and uh, will blame everybody else until yeah. you put them in, a, put you back them in the corner and be like, all right, all right my bad, I yeah. messed up. So she's probably one of those people that she thinks that she, the world evolves around her yeah. and when she bumped you, she thought that you should just brush it off yeah. and her man should just, I don't know, he but he was, under, he, he was smart. He was smart yeah, about it, but like, you know how it goes. Because he saw what happened, and he just because he saw my face when I as when I looked up and just looked at her walking away, and he did, I'm glad he did that because I was just like, Ooh. and then the other thing that happened before that, I went to see Arnaz J, the comedian. Dude, how that? How was that? Man, that dude had everybody in there dying. I was sweating. That's how much I was sweating. And I got a headache. That's how much I was laughing. That's dope. And in the middle of the show. This lady decided that she's gonna interrupt his act to tell him that she is offended and his jokes are, are political. Like in the middle of in the middle of his act, she didn't even let him finish the punchline of the joke. Pretty much the joke. He was talking about guns, uh, gun. You know how folks down south and stuff, people love their guns down south, and he was talking about all races, like. Yeah. So he was moseying on down with all races. So he started with white folks. He said they love their guns. And they buy all the bullets. He said black folks buy the guns, but they don't have no bullets. Nah. But he was he was getting to it, but she interrupted him. And you know, he was being courteous and let him talk, let her talk, but the crowd was just like, yo, nobody came to hear you. Shut up, shut up. My, but <laughs> he he's been a comedian for like over 30 years. Yeah. At least 30 years. He's yeah. been on Comic View since we were younger. Yeah. So you know what type of comedy. Yeah. Entails. You know what he's bringing to the table. When you buy your tickets, you yeah. know, like, and you can do your research. You can YouTube his whole career. Yeah. So start educating yourselves, people. And like, the worst part is, for her being offended, he was literally talking about every race. Like, he, there were some Asian folks in the crowd. He was talking about them. He was talking about Africans, Latinos. He, he went down every list. And for her to do that, then she tried to put her boyfriend in it. She tried to say, we. And he looked at her like, <laughs> no, 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 not we. This is you. He just looked at her like this is a you thing. So she ended up getting up and leaving. They ended up getting up and leaving, but the boyfriend or husband, you could tell he did not want to leave because he was actually having a good time and enjoying the show. But she legit just ruined it for him. And I was just I'm not gonna lie to you. If I was him, I'd gave her the keys. I'd get home. I'd get home. <laughs> you can wait for me. If you want to go home, go home. I'm yeah. staying. You ain't going to ruin my night just because you can't get over your own mental deficiencies. And the, and the liquid, too. She that liquid courage, too. But, but that's, when that, that's when that entitlement comes in. Yeah. And like, the, the, the audacity that you have to st uh, interrupt somebody while they're doing their job. <laughs> and who do you think you are when you, per you, wait, you purchase the tickets and then you're going to go... 
It, I, it just blows and my she mind. she sat in the front row. It's kind of like, the, oh, no different than the guy with the Pistons. You got punched in the face or step on the court with Jermaine O'Neal. Yeah. Oh, kind of similar. Just stay in y'all place. Enjoy the show. If you don't like it, get up and peacefully leave. She sat in the front row. Like, you know when you sit in the front row of a com- comedy show, you are... <laughs> you are target number yeah, one. Yeah, like, like you're asking to be part of the show. Yeah. People in the front row, second row, they, are, they, they end up being part of the act. Yeah. You know this. Yeah. When you're buying the ticket, you make sure you're the freshest person in there yeah. so he don't clown you. Yeah. Like, it's just certain things you know about no, comedy no, shows. No, it don't matter if you were fresh there. He was clown. Oh, he was, oh yeah, 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 it matter. don't matter. I mean, you can be fresh and ugly. You oh, got to yeah, be clown no, being no. ugly. No, but, there was uh, fresh and <laughs> good-looking people in the front row. And he, no, uh, everybody got it. It was, yeah, but that, that was my weekend. Uh, there was also the Pats had a good weekend going out west on the road and getting a big one. Finally, they beat a good team. We've been waiting for them. The offense is still here, but the defense stepped up when they needed to. Defense even got a touchdown. And, you know, now they're 4-4. Four and four. Good three-game winning streak going on right now. And this is the NFL. A w- wins are wins, and however you get them, you get them. Yeah, I'm going to agree with that. A wins a win because all I'm going to say is – I, I liked how the, what the Pats are doing, but the Chargers just kind of gave them this game. They didn't, they didn't stick to their formula. Jackson ran the ball three times the whole game for 79 yards. That's not a formula for success, but I am happy that our Pats capitalized on it because mm-hmm. when you see the Pats in your schedule now, you're like, you know what, we could try some things with this team because yeah. we, we probably still beat them. Yeah. Now you're showing, they're showing they're competitive. And when I was watching with Hood, I was like, I was like hey, we, we might make the playoffs, we might not. But at least we can do is make each game competitive. So yeah. people aren't wasting their money. I, I talked to you about this, too. So people aren't wasting their money. Yeah. So that's how you develop a good team. Even the past with, with, um, with Bledsoe, they weren't, they weren't awful. But they were always in the game. Yeah, they were competitive. They made it worthwhile. Yeah. And the thing about this game, too, what you got to do with an offense like the Chargers, you got to keep them off the field. And the Pats had mm-hmm. the ball 11, to, 11 minutes longer than the, than, the, than the Chargers. And also, Austin Eckler, I don't think he was in the game. They, they pretty much, yeah, they... For some reason, every time this past two times they played, they played the Chargers. They made an effort to say, "Justin Herbert, you got to beat us." And they put the pressure on him. They got to him, got him off his mark, and they turned him over. But the problem with that is, though, oh, they overall rushed twenty times, and they was getting eight yards per carry. Why wouldn't you just stick with that to a certain extent? Yeah, you know what the biggest difference was this game was that pick six. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh no, definitely, <laughs> definitely, definitely. You don't turn to because they. The Chargers easily could have won this game because they had control, and then that pick six happened. <laughs> like, for Herbert to have two intos, for them to go 4-12 and 12 on third downs, yeah. like, for them to only lose by three, that's why I mean. That's why I'm glad the Pats just capitalized yeah. on all, all the mistakes. The Chargers were just yeah. letting it happen. Yeah. You know, apparently, they didn't listen to you last week about that red zone getting in there, you know, because. <laughs> they got me one, excited, man. One, one for four in the red zone. We got issues down there. They got <laughs> issues down there. I don't know what it is, but they have issues down there and so they need to they need to some way somehow find a way to fix that as this season because we're all like a halfway point of the season so they they need to fi- figure a way to fix that I don't know who they have coming up they got the Panthers coming up I don't you know so they got a couple Panthers that Panthers that Brown so all right no that no problem for the Cowboys they got a guy named Cooper Rush came in there threw for like 400 yards and threw the game-winning touchdown pass late in that game to Amari Cooper. And my thing with this game is kudos to the Cowboys for winning it because these are the games that they normally would lose in previous years, especially if they got a backup in. But if I was the owner of the Minnesota Vikings, the CEO or general manager, a lot of people would have been out that building the next day, starting with that overpaid quarterback of theirs because some of the stuff they was doing in the red zone, it was just like, you have two dynamic wide well, you have one dynamic wide receiver and another good wide receiver and there was y'all did not attempt to get them the ball and well once and the one time they did it they got a touchdown out of it but besides that when they got down there they did they weren't even looking their way yeah man the overall Minnesota was just bad overall you can't go one and 13 with third downs against the Cowboys like come on bro first one was in the first quarter yeah <laughs> So it just shows that I don't know what they were doing. They, they did not have a formula for success. Like I said, you know, I'm big on balance. They rushed the ball 24 times, one on one, 4.2 yards a carry. You might as well have doubled that, Especially or at least 35 times. Especially when your quarterback's Kirk Cousins. Especially when your quarterback is Mr. Cousins, who 
is isn't as consistent as he once was a couple years ago. I don't know what happened. Age, you know what I mean? It, just, it happens. But, yeah, they did not play well whatsoever. Yeah. And kudos to the Cowboys for in rush for balling. 24 for 40, 325. Granny had one in tow, but that that's not surprising. Yeah. We, we expect him to have more than one in tow, to be yeah. honest with yeah. you. And him, him getting eight yards per pass? <laughs> And then, and it was that last play that led to the, I think it was a third, I think it was a fourth down play. It was like fourth and 11 when he got the ball to Ezekiel Elliott. And all the Vikings had to do was tackle him. They tackled him, and they did not. They tried to arm tackle him, and he ran through it, got the first down, and then boom, they get in the end zone. And then the Vikings' last possession. I have no idea what that was. It no, was just, oh. it was just so horrible. The whole thing... We, the Cowboys deserve their credit, but we also looking at the Vikings like, what in the world were y'all doing? It was like, you guys are coming off a of bye week, and y'all came in this with probably the worst type of game plan, knowing that their backup quarterback is in. You pretty much hold, you held Zeke. You held Zeke and Pollard to you know 76 yards total between the two of them, but you just let <laughs> Amari and C.D. Lamb go off. Yeah, I was going to say, like, Elliott only rushed the ball for six, 16 times, and you let Rush beat y'all. Right. I don't know. Most teams, that's not happening. Most teams, they're going to, like, they're going to make it hard for Rush. And he was out there looking like he was starting for some time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm happy for him, though. Like, yeah. It's good to see a backup so, succeed and play well. Seize the opportunity. Dope. Yeah, man. This also lets me know that all that talent the Cowboys have, you got to be, if you're like a, quarterback that can think you you'll be all right in that because they have a lot of talent but they only get away with playing like this with minnesota <laughs> so zeke needs to touch the ball 25 oh, 30 man. times if rush is gonna be a quarterback yeah. for a couple more weeks and yeah Kirk cousins out there stealing money man yeah Jeez he is Louise out there stealing money Hell. I picked the Bucks to win this game, but I forgot we, we it was both, Halloween. We both picked the Bucks, bro. I, forgot and it was I, was Halloween. Shoot, I don't know why I picked the Bucks. Yeah. Oh, I forgot it was Halloween, and every time, no matter what, Halloween, a team goes down in New Orleans. It don't matter how good you were playing coming in there. There's just some crazy stuff that happens down there in New Orleans and Halloween, and the Bucks for that first half, they look. They look like they didn't even know how to play with you. They, they played, <laughs> they played together for a while because they were, they were horrible in that first half. And then they picked it up. But then their defense couldn't stop somebody named Trevor Simeon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This must have been the weekend of the backups, just because backups out <laughs> no, there balling. Oh, yeah. I, think, I think like three or four. <laughs> they was out there balling, man. I don't know. But once again. I don't really know, like the Bucks. Granted, this is like their like All Star break type deal because it's like midway through the season. So yeah, I feel like buy. some teams are kind of like wishing for that buy to have <laughs> that buy to come, and it seems like the Bucks is one of those teams. Right. I, I I legit don't understand how they their defense couldn't get it. Just, all they needed was one stop late in the game, and then that turnover, that pick six Brady threw. And I was just like, who are you throwing the ball to? The dude was double covered. Bro, they just tr trying to force it. They just had a lapse in this, just just mental lapse in everything. Yeah. They had 11 penalties for almost 100 yards. Yeah. Like, they had three turnovers. Mm -hmm. They weren't playing like the Buccaneers. They only rushed the ball 14 times with 71 yards. Yeah. They get five yards per carry. They, yeah. they just they were just playing all out of sorts. Like. Yeah, good. but kudos to the Bucs and Trevor Simeon for taking advantage the of Saints. the Saints. The Saints, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> Trevor Simeon and the Saints. For taking advantage, because after Winston went down, you could they could have easily just folded it up and be like, well, this isn't our day. But you know, their defense stepped up, uh, offensive. They, they made some big plays, especially when the Bucks came back to take the lead. They went down there and take the lead. And turnovers. That is the moment. Brady had an old man moment. Oh yeah, when he got stripped and he was like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I say, I say, yo, he had an old man moment, bro. I'm, I'm <laughs> telling you, man, Halloween in New Orleans, Halloween in New Orleans is something else. There's something about playing in that building in Halloween. It's like, and too, I think they, I think the Saints want to win for for Jameis though, yeah, like, yeah. cause Jameis been playing, you know, playing better, yeah, playing he was, well. Yeah, he was playing well. He's playing he was well, playing and you know, he got the moves still. <laughs> man, That's man. my guy. Nah, <laughs> I, I'd have been dancing too after that game, Jameis dog. Jameis is un unintentionally hilarious. Yeah. I just saw a clip last night <laughs> of uh, the pregame speech one of the linebackers was giving. <laughs> Jameis was over there being like the deacon and stuff like that, talking, and the dude was just like, look around you. All you see is Jameis like, like yo, 
he is so unintentionally funny. It's, it's no, you just can't, you just can't help but root for him because he's just hilarious. Yeah, he's just a genuine person, man. He's genuine. Minus the crab leg stuff, but. I mean, he had I'm, to I'm, I'm young. They gave him those crab legs. He didn't steal them. They gave it to him. He had to grow up a little bit. No, they, they legit. Gave I was him talking him. about his his situations uh, in the past. Before that, yeah. Oh yeah, he's gotta yeah. grow up a little yeah. bit, but yeah. he's fine now. Yeah. <laughs> and and I, I think I think how the NFL did him, he's he's seeing now I gotta be a little more serious about stuff and more business like this because he 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 uh, cleaned up the way he talked. He, yeah. wasn't, he wasn't sounding country no more. He, yeah, he realized, like, oh, man, they ain't playing with <laughs> Yeah, I think he, told, he went to, like, a speech class or something, but, yeah. Well, they usually give him all media training. Remember when Melo first came to the league? I, one person I hope they never give media training to is Anthony Edwards. I love that dude. Oh, nah, man, man. he's that, classic. He's that classic. Dude, that's my favorite player right now in the league. He is hilarious. And I, I think with some of them, it's more or less pronunciation of words. It's because yeah. they come from a certain background, and, you yeah. know, like, we got certain slangs, yeah, our, yeah. our accents, you know. And I say, ka. Yeah. Like, <laughs> 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 but yeah, kudos to the to the to the Saints for that. You know the Bucks are zero and three against the Saints in the regular season. That's what's up, man. Zero for three. That's that's embarrassing. Yeah, I, it I, is. I, I'd be mad. I'd be fighting somebody. I can't keep losing to a team in the regular season. For real. Uh, Green Bay. There's some stuff happening with Green Bay. So uh, we'll talk about the game as well. So Aaron Rodgers is uh, he won't be playing this weekend because he got COVID. They just had a whole bunch of players. That were out last week due to COVID. I, one thing I want to know is what in the world is going on up there in that locker room. And then it came to find out Aaron Rodgers said he was vaccinated. Then come to find out he wasn't vaccinated, but he wasn't doing the protocols. You know, the, the mask being masked up and stuff. So it's like, it's like, all right, this might get worse as before Sunday's game because. We'll, they might have some more players that have to take that health and safety protocols, and now he's got a yeah 14 days before he could come back, and it's just at the worst time too. And then you gotta worry about when he comes back because we've seen what happened with the with our boy yeah. Cam. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what's going on with this. You know me, I'm pretty honest about my stance on stuff, so I don't understand why like, you can't just be honest about it. Like I, I, I don't get it. Yeah. Because I, I was watching um. Ness and they was they was talking about too this little sports show and they were saying that he said he was vaccinated but he's yeah. not vaccinated but regardless you can still catch COVID if you're vaccinated anyways. Yeah, but so I, I just don't. I, but I don't know. I don't know if that's. I don't know if he's actually not vaccinated because I didn't. I didn't get the actual oh, story. Yeah. Oh yeah. So nah, they came out today. Oh, uh, right. oh yeah, yeah. That that's everybody found out today because he right. said because he said in the. In a press conference, like during the off season, like he said, he was uh, immunization. He he used that. Yeah. That usually means you're right. That, yeah, yeah, that yeah means, usually. Means, yeah. So and then yeah, and the, all the reports came out today that he's not. So that it was just like okay, well you you didn't have to lie about it. <laughs> you know, like you, you don't have to lie. You can say you're not. And, and but because, also because the NFL they yeah. have their. Uh, it's like different because you couldn't they to get tested all the time but like this time. weird like the overall umbrella with it where like you got these guys doing commercials and stuff and talking about getting vaccinated and stuff so i don't think he feels comfortable just being i i don't know it's weird just because like it's weird yeah. it's weird i guess like, i don't know he i don't know he don't want to get Kyrie irving or something like yeah. i don't know i feel like the nfl is a little more lenient compared to the nba and he plays in a place that yeah, <laughs> I didn't even know that situation either. I didn't know if so. It's like oh yeah, yeah. He like so. What I read was like they the players over there they get tested they get tested daily. Okay, and you know they they uh, the organization help wants them to wear their masks. So pretty much, if you're not if you're not vaccinated, just do the other stuff. You know, wear your mask all the time and you know wash practice, your hands, yeah, practice clean. social distance. But he wasn't. Doing neither of that. Well, the mask part, I know he wasn't. He wasn't doing that. So, it's crazy. But what, what was AJ Green doing in this on that last play of, the, of that game? I don't. I I I, I don't know. <laughs> hey, what? <laughs> I, I, uh, uh. I just looked at. I looked at that play. I'm like, yo, what, 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 why are you why are you blocking? Why aren't you looking for the ball? It's like the the defender played the ball better than like it was his. <sighs> Sometimes they, some people just have brain lapses, man. You know, you got to get used to being on that team, I guess. Yeah, it was a weird moment. I know I said the same thing. I was like, uh, okay. Yeah, that was my reaction. I was like. Miscommunication? 
Well, yeah, it looked like on the receivers. Eh? <laughs> Cause the but it's like, what other route could you be running? <laughs> you don't got that much space. Just turn around. And also, <laughs> like, just look, look for the ball. You're in the red zone. Look for the ball. Even if it wasn't going to come to you, just look anyway. He, like, turned to he like, turned the wrong way, too. Yeah. And he turned left to turn it right. Yeah. Like, you know. <laughs> yeah, I did miscommunication. Mm -hmm. But honestly, though, they just didn't play well. Oh, no. Collins just didn't play well. Oh, no. They had turnovers. Yeah, they just they didn't play well. They couldn't move the ball. They couldn't block. And the Packers, the Packers, this, this, is what, this is what's more disappointing about this whole Aaron Rodgers situation. They're coming off a big win, too, on the road where a bunch of backups were pretty much in there. They're coming off a win. That, like, and then he threw that touchdown pass, getting hit like that. Yeah. And the man, they, they had memes. <laughs> no lie, bro. Like a minute after he got hit on the floor, they had memes already. Yeah. That's yeah. probably when he caught COVID. <laughs> <laughs> That's the face when you catch COVID. <laughs> We hope you hit. I mean, we, we hope you know, get better, improve. COVID is not a joke. I had some friends that caught COVID and they're doing well. So. Yeah, that's funny. I, I know. I mean, yeah. The, oh, okay. That's funny. <laughs> the moment when you catch COVID. Oh, uh, man. Uh, another terrible news. Derrick Henry is out for the season with a hurt L. This has been a terrible week for NFL headlines. Uh, Derrick Henry done for the season, foot injury, and they're just coming off another win on the road against the Colts. But it's just like, man, these teams can't catch a break. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I kind of had a feeling he might have been injured because he rushed the ball like 20 some times for only 60 yards. That is unheard of. Yeah. The man, like, the man rolls over and averages like <laughs> five yards a carry. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So I knew something was up. Yeah, but kudos to them. They, they picked up Adrian Peterson. So oh, my yeah. God. Oh, we yeah, was yeah, asking yeah. about a, AP. Yeah, they Word picked, up. They picked up Adrian because they know Ryan Tannehill, if you going to lean on him, for for y'all to get there, it's just no. He needs like he legit needs a solid running game, cause man. Yo, if you lean on him, you better just call Joe Clock. <laughs> Free Mr. Clock. Free Mr. Clock. You smoke crack, don't you? <laughs> With the east side high. <laughs> So, ten, so basically, you do not want to lead on Tannehill. Oh, I lost my train. AP's going to help out Tannehill. Man, I lost my train of thought. I lost my, I'm going to just move on because I lost my train of thought. The biggest upset of, we're just going to go through this one briefly. The biggest upset of the weekend was the New York J-E-T-S Jets, Jets, Jets. I don't know what was going on with the Bengals, but this was a terrible weekend for a lot of teams. That's how Slater games, there was just a lot of, a lot of crazy things happened. Some guy named Mike White got up in there and was <laughs> looked like he should be the he should be their starter full time. She don't looking like the player of the weekend, minus right? them two intos though. Yeah. But that's expected from backups. Right. We automatically give y'all one into. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So two, and, that ain't that bad for the backups. And I'm almost averaging a first down per pass, bro. Yeah, I think he threw for 405 yards. But yeah, that's what I mean. Looking like the player of the weekend. But my thing is with Burrow, Burrow's just coming back. When he rolls out the pocket, he doesn't even look comfortable running still. Yeah. Why are you only running the ball four times a quarter? Excuse me. Yeah, you good, bro. Why are you only running four times a quarter? That doesn't make sense to me. Balance is the key. He should not be, I mean, 34 times ain't that bad, but he's, you know what I mean? You need balance, You look at bro. your defense, too. Yeah. Like why y'all allowed 17 points in the fourth quarter to a guy named Mike White? This is after you pretty much shut down one of the top, one of the top five league MVP candidates the previous week in Lamar in Lamar Jackson, and then you put out this performance, so like 17 points in the fourth quarter. And they were plus 12 on you, time possession. So you know the best way to beat the Bengals is he borrow off the field. Yeah, right. So I mean, the Jets needed this one because they needed they needed something positive to happen over there because there was I feel bad for the coach too. It's a first year coach. I be trying, you know, I be trying, I be rooting for these first year minority coaches to see, but yeah, they needed this win badly because it was, it was looking abysmal for them for the most part of the season. But sometimes you just gotta get this win. Uh, all right, okay. Some other NFL news: Aaron, Do Aaron Donald, Von Miller are gonna be on the same defensive line because the the Rams traded for Von Miller earlier this week and got him. Yes. How did how the Broncos yeah, let that happen? Because they're just like, we're not that good, so we're just going to like. You're going to get rid of Vaughn Miller, though? <laughs> they, got, they got rid of him, I think, for, I think, a, a draft pick or something like that. But 
They just added the, the Rams got all pros on their front line, their back line, and their secondary. Yeah, good luck to opposing quarterbacks now because if Von Miller could, you know, sometimes when you just go know somewhere new, you get a fresh start and you just get that whole that whole mojo back. This might be the case too, and he won't be double teamed. So it's like, okay. <laughs> How did I? I'm, my mind is blown. <laughs> like what? It doesn't like the Broncos really gonna suck now? Yeah, yeah, they are, and the Rams are like going all in for the Super Bowl. They've been doing this the past three years, just going all the way in, just you know, trading people, trading draft picks. They don't have a draft pick for that. I don't think. I think they have one draft pick the next couple years. I mean, what they really, what position do they really need to cover? <laughs> they got everything. So someone said, someone said after they drafted. <laughs> After the draft, of Jared Goff number one, they looked at themselves as like, yeah, we're never going to do this draft thing yeah, again. So let's nah, just get yeah, rid of like, Because you had number one pick and Goff scoffed. Like, he was booty yeah. for the Rams. Like, so. This is a big pickup for them because, man, that defense, you, you done already got playmakers all over the place. Now you just added another one. If they don't win the Super Bowl this year, man, there's no. At least, at least make the Super Bowl. At least, right? At least at, make at it. At least, like, don't, don't. If they if they go out there and lose in the first or second round, you're just like, all right, all that for what? Nothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and on some other NFL news, man, you see this one? Well, no, I mean, I've been at work. The, Ra- the Raiders. Oh yeah. Everything. Oh, we talked about it last night. Granted, one thing you gotta say: condolences to, to the lady that lost her life. There's a lady or man. I don't even know Someone the person lost, who lost, their, lost life. their life. That's unfortunate. You already know we talked about it on the show before. We weren't the biggest fans of a team going to Las Vegas. Vegas is a state. Nevada just needs to have just the casino. Because yeah. it's like you got these guys. Granted, nobody should be DUI. Nobody should be driving drunk. But it's like no. you have these guys living in Vegas still trying to be professional athletes yeah, and being humans. In your 20s, like yeah. Vegas. This, the you know worst what I mean? part like, about this, he was so irresponsible. Like, he was driving 156 miles per hour. I won't even drive over 100, 110. Like, right? the, oh, like drive, how do you even control the wheel going I, that fast? I go 80, and I'm like, yo, it's too fast for me. And, like, he, somebody's dead, and he could have he could have died himself, too. Like, I saw the mugshot from him. He had a neck brace on. But yeah, this is just, yeah, this, it was just complete, and just some total irresponsible behavior from him because it was just like, yo. How are you the, going that fast? The, now you, now your football career is done. You're going to jail. You're going to jail or prison. What are, you're going, you're go, you're going to do some time because you did, they're not going to let this go. But 156 miles per hour, bro. Uh, like I, there ain't, there isn't, uh, there's no um, mistakes. I'm sorry. Like, yeah. like what were you doing? I know we're all, I know we've all been young and did some dumb stuff, but you know, like that right there is just. Irresponsible, very, very irresponsible, and they always tell people, "How get a driver? Call us." So there's plenty of ways to avoid something like this happening. There's driving services. The team can provide a driver for you. You got Uber, Lyft. There was no need for you to be driving. And and when you play for the Rays organization, they probably need to hammer that home. Just yeah. because being in Vegas, see that never sleeps, bro. Yeah. It's potty time all day, every day, and these guys like to enjoy their life after yeah. after the game. Game, so you got to be even more careful living in Vegas. You got something like, like people play for Green Bay. Yeah, ain't nothing going on in Wisconsin. You know what I mean? Yeah. But Vegas, yeah, you got to be more careful. Yeah, and it just, it just shows. Yeah, like, this, this is, is ridiculous, yeah, this man. Is just this is whole crazy. Sad. This is just sad all yeah. around. You just when you just read the details of what happened, you just like, and then you see he's only 22. Then you see the lady died. It was like, yo, this is. Ugh. It's so like you worked all your life to get to that point, to, to get to that moment, or that to get to this place in your life, and then now it's just, it's just two, all about two lives ended. Two yeah, lives ended. Pretty much. A lady's life ended for, for being the wrong place, the wrong time, yeah. and his life ended for being irresponsible. Yeah. Well, for everybody out there, please don't drink and drive. Call somebody, have a designated driver, use Lyft, or just stay home and drink. So that's what I do. Yeah. Yeah. All right, no, we no no huddle this week, but we well, let's talk about some. We gonna talk about some other stuff. Let's talk about the World Series quickly. Congratulations to the Atlanta Braves. They finally ended a 25 year drought, beating the Houston Astros last night. I watched the last four or five innings of this game. This was Bat Boy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the Bat Boy. <laughs> All right, like a Batman to me. He only bigger than Peterson. <laughs> 
Right. Well, but this one, the Braves went up on them early, quickly. They got a quick, like, 6 nothing lead on them. And the Braves were doing this the whole series. They just kept getting up on the Astros early. They, they blew it the previous game, but they were able to do that. And the, the Astros looked like the Red Sox last series. That's how they look. Oh, okay. Bats wasn't... Bats wasn't connecting. They weren't doing it. And I'm just like, oh, now they want to not be able to hit nothing. But they're in the red, playing the Red Sox. They're over there hitting home runs left and right. Like, this was quite the – and you know the folks in Atlanta were, were sweating after – because they had the 3-1 lead, then, then the Astros won it. So they were, you know, they were, thought, they were thinking I'm, like, is this going to happen to us again? I'm happy for them. So it kind of lifts that shadow. Yeah. Somewhat, you know, it's always going to be there for football until you guys win one in the Super Bowl. Oh, but, yeah. but baseball, it lifted a little bit of that shadow off y'all. And from what I read about this team, everyone's saying this is one of the most likable teams in the league with just the players that they have on that team. I mean, they had that one guy, he be wearing the chain, but I think he was hurt. I forget. I think his last name is Acuna or something like that. Pedro, you know what I'm talking about? Acuna Jr.? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, Acuna. He was out for the season. Yeah, he was out for the season, but he's one of the other guys that he could have played this season clearly, but he's one of those exciting young players in okay. the league that people like. So this team just had a whole bunch of players that people like. And, you know, most teams, everybody was rooting, everyone was rooting against Houston. I low key was kind of rooting for them because I wanted them to be petty after they won. But everyone was rooting against Houston for obvious reasons. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> yeah, but congratulations to the Braves on winning that one. Okay, we have turmoil in Boston. Duh, man, we got Celtics. I, I just know I put this on Facebook earlier, but I know a lot of people owe me an apology. I've been telling folks about this dude for years. No, they won't tell. Everybody was calling me a hater, a market smart hater. I'm trying to tell you all about him. <laughs> but what's that's, the, that's besides the point here. What's the issue with Marcus Smart, man? Ah, uh, man. So, pretty much he said he's tired of sitting in the corner all game long. And what's wrong with that? Which, which is cool, but then you don't call out your teammates in a public manner. And this isn't the first time this has happened. This is like the second or third time, like in the past couple of years, that he's done this. Like, we get the frustration. But sometimes you don't need to say, like, you can just go fight in the locker room or do that in the locker room or something or just say it in a different way. But he got to ask a question, though. He got to ask a specific question that he kind of went into detail. So, so I'm just saying he, did, he was kind of baited into that. But I will, I will say, though, Tatum only averages 3.7 assists and Brown only averages 2.5. So, like, like come but on. He's, he's looking at the wrong people because – I'm looking at the – I said off season, these dudes need to get a, point, a playmaker, a point guard, because the two, the two wings, they're not those, ty they're not those type but, of players. But Schroeder averages six assists a game, you know what I mean? Which he, he could average a little more, you know what I mean? Yeah, he's coming off the bench. Yeah, that's what I mean. So it's like it's it's tough. Granted, I I seen like they just they having well, Udoka's having a hard time just understanding the team itself. He's not playing the young guys enough. You gotta you gotta give the older guys a rest just because the vets need time. Just you know they need time yeah. to get implemented into the team because some some new guys came in. And so, yes, yeah, new additions and some young guys gotta play in. Udoka's still figuring it out. But let's be real though. They gotta be more. They gotta be more aggressive as in get get into the paint. The whole team, yeah, yeah, as, yeah. As, as a whole, yeah, like. yeah, yeah. Because watching that game, in, watching that game in person was depressing. Because you just kept seeing, I just kept seeing three after three, and after three just breaking. And you know, what was the worst part. I was surrounded by Bulls fans. There was a bunch of Bulls fans sitting around me, which made it even worse. So I'm just sitting there like this. Like Peyton, Peyton Pritchard should play a lot more. Yeah, that, well, that right now you should play more than Josh Richardson because Josh Richardson. <laughs> but Peyton showed that he can knock the three down. He's yeah. consistent, efficient, can control the offense. Yeah. He can pass the ball to open guys. They're just not a good basketball team right now overall. Like the, the, the ingredients right now are not meshing with this team, which was which was which was one of my concerns coming into this season. Also, too, though, what I was gonna say is I've been talking about the the assist. Like Tatum shoot, like Tatum and Brown shoot the ball 20, 24 times, and the next person shoots twelve. That that we Let's need eighteen. You know what I mean, like this, that's that's a problem. Like yeah, twelve. Need, like, they, the, this is the same. This is the same issue that they had last year. The, the majority of their points are coming from those two guys, and then the drop off is like is dramatic. It's drastically bad with the drop off. So it's like, 
nigga, and he's like, come on, man, we got to. But I, I, I right totally, on. I totally understand you, him, the, your frustration with him verbalizing his issues with the media, because I'm not big on talking to anybody about my team right. other than my teammates in the locker room. You know right. me, I got issues, so I would have ran up on one of them yeah. just because that's just how. They, I, they didn't even talk. And they had to look down on me like, what's yeah. the little dude and, doing? And this is what made it. <laughs> <laughs> and it, what made it worse is like the team didn't. The team pretty much said, all right. After they heard that, they didn't let. Brown or Tatum talk to the media after that game. So, yeah. Because that wasn't going to get any better after that. I but, understand. But it in all reality, though, each player knows what they should and should be doing on the court and what they are and what they're not doing. Yeah. So, sometimes you got to grill them a little bit and ask them what do they feel. And they could be like, you know what, I could be, you know what I mean, I could facilitate a little more. You know, it's all, and it, they're still trying to figure out. You know what I mean themselves it's as a just, team. This is just the same old, same old stuff, just a different year. So that's why I just be watching like. Uh, and where's our vets though? Who's really our vet? They ain't got no adult in the room. Another, it, this is stuff that's been going on for like, the past whatever years. Think about it. When Paul came, he had Walker. Yeah. Walker was the album. He wasn't there that much longer than him before yeah. him, but he was there long enough to. Yeah. You know Let's what I mean? go. So we need. We're gonna come back. Let's go to let's go to Athletes Corner real quick. We're gonna come back, talk some other stuff, but let's go to Athletes Corner. We got some West Lynn Pop Warner with us, James Hunt and his boys. The this was the 10 U team that won the city championships. Shout out East Lynn too. We'll talk, we're gonna talk to them. We're gonna come back. Hello and welcome to another edition of Athletes Corner. As you can see, we got a full house here. We got the 10 U City Champs, Westland Rams. Make some noise! I got, I got Paul and James here, man. You guys had, uh, yeah, it was quite the, quite the weekend, uh, quite the day on Sunday. <laughs> I mean, just talk, just talk to me about that whole day because it was a. Uh, a lot of people showed out to show support for East and West Lane and to come out for those games. You know, just as coaches, just to talk to me about having uh, everyone come out on that day just to support the kids. Uh, shout out to Lynn first, man. The fact that Lynn, uh, everybody basically came out to support the kids, that was huge. Uh, East Lynn was home, so they did a good job of hosting. Um, overall, you know, everybody was good towards the kids mm -hmm. on both sides. I thought that was great. You know, obviously some teams win, some teams lose, but that wasn't the case for this team. Uh, yeah, it definitely was not the case for this team. I mean, that was a shutout that you guys pitched out there. Paul, talk to me about the game plan that you guys had going into that one. Um, we prepared. We prepared for every team the same. We go hard in practice every week. We try to break down film. We'll have the kids come over in the backyard. We'll watch film on the team that we're playing. Um, Eastland, we knew they were going to be a, a great team. Every team we played had been a pretty good team this year. But I just think uh, this team this year, the way this team's work ethic is, we're on another level. Yeah, talk, talk to me about this group of kids. You guys undefeated correctly, if not correct? Uh, yes. Had a few shout, had a couple shout, had some shout outs. There have been some yeah. games that haven't been closed. I mean, talk to me. How, how are these guys all just able to process the information you guys give them? Well, for, for it started. November 2020, um, the kids that have been working out in that gym for, since November of 2020 at Kenny Green's gym, um, it translated into spring football, which translated into fall football. A lot of the older kids mm -hmm. have led by example, um, and the younger ones are, you know, you each one teach one, you know. Um, the, they're just as tough as the as the bigger kids, the smaller ones. Mm -hmm. They they fear nobody, and I mean nobody. And they line up, and when you come, they're coming, and they don't care how small. I mean how big you are. They don't care. They're they're physical, and that's that's what that's that's been our brand mm -hmm. is to be more physical than anybody else. Mm -hmm. You might have might you may have a slight edge on speed, but if we hit you, you're gonna feel it. Yeah, def definitely and. There was no, you guys didn't play the, last year, it, uh, there was no Pop Warner last no. year. Uh, yeah, so um, with that happening, with COVID not taking away Pop Warner last year, how, were you, how, you, how excited were you guys just to be able to have it back this year? And also the, the time that you guys had with the kids probably was more time for you guys to train, for them to train and just be able to focus on the upcoming season. Well, this year has been 
great because not only me and Paul been together, but we were able to bring Coach Jose, who also coached some of these kids in 2019. Mm -hmm. Coach Felix, um, great. It's been great having all the coaches together. We're all we all have the same mindset. We're all on the same path. We all we all, you know. We're all passionate, very passionate. We go over film, we watch film, um, and that's the key for us is the film. Yeah. We know, we kind of know what everybody's going to do, and we can translate it to them because they're, none of these kids get under a 70. Um, our, our overall, we have a lot of A students and honor roll students on this team, and I'm blessed to have that because that translates a lot in the field so we can say, hey, this is where you need to be, and they know exactly where they need to be, and they know where the ball's going or where, where they're gonna run, and they're there. Mm -hmm. and, and Paul, talk to me about what you guys got coming up next. You know, the postseason. The postseason is here. I know after this, you guys got practice to get ready for that. But you know, talk to me about the the special ride that you guys are hoping to have in this postseason because now it's like it's the road to Orlando now. So just talk to me about the process for this. We're not even thinking about Orlando, honestly. We're thinking about Dorchester. We got our first playoff game versus Dorchester, and then the second game would be against Malden or, or Mount Hope. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're focused on right now. Um, we beat Dorchester in the regular season, but like I told these kids yesterday, I've coached teams and we've beat teams in the regular season, lost to them in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. It's a whole nother season. And I told these guys we got to focus and be more ready than ever because mm -hmm. that Dorchester team, they're coming. They're hungry guys. And it's always hard to beat a team twice. Exactly. You know, you, Very hard. Especially the, in the fashion you guys beat them the first time. They're definitely, <laughs> they're definitely going to put a, a much better effort than yes. what happened the last time you guys played them. Yeah. yeah. All right. I mean, and this game's at Manning Field, correct? Yes. All right. Tell, tell the people the time for that game. Uh, the time for us is 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Uh, 11 o'clock Sunday, November 7th. Yeah. And also, just talk about the whole Pop Warner, the Pop Warner League with Eastland Westland, because there is an Eastland team, some Eastland teams in the postseason, correct? Yes. They, uh, yeah. they have a 12U and a 14U, and I believe their 6U is playing in the Baby Bowl in Mattapan. All right, gotcha. Um, can you guys just talk about just the whole Eastland and Westland, the success, and just how, I mean, how everyone that's a part of that program are uh, helping these kids not only become better football players, but as better people and better young men and learning just what it takes to succeed in any aspect of life. Everybody on both sides, as far as I'm concerned, anybody that is volunteering and picking up kids and dropping off kids and trying to help them with schoolwork or, or just talk to them about, you know, they might have, you know, personal issues going on. And sometimes a coach is easy to talk to than a parent, mm -hmm. and that happens a lot. And, um, and, and it, like I said, it's just more than X's and O's. It's yeah. life. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm probably one... I love the kids. I'm probably the hardest coach that they'll probably face have for a while because I am hard. I demand a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm tough. Yeah. But I love them, and I'll do anything I can for them. Yeah. We do a lot of bonding stuff. We try to, whether we go to the Scream Fest, whether we do Canopy Lake in the summer, cookouts at Coach Paul's, anything we can do to get them to, the, the bonding is the most important thing because then they fight for each other on the field. Like, like, like they are our brothers and sisters mm -hmm. throughout the season. And yeah, that's one aspect of coaching that, that, that people really don't understand is all the, the time that, you, that the coaches that they put in to volunteer their time. You know, this is voluntary time for the coaches, you know, because most of everyone got jobs and other responsibilities with family and stuff like that, but they still make that time to, to help the kids and volunteer their time. That's the aspect of coaching that some people don't understand. Yeah, that, well, that's that for me. That's a that's it's Mando. I won't stop coaching and helping kids because I, I was one of those kids that mm -hmm. didn't have that, and I know where that avenue leads to. Mm -hmm. Not all, not all the kids, but you know, there's some kids that you know that that need that one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one and need that bonding that they may not get at home. Yeah. Uh, what was what was the most uh, exciting part about Sunday's victory? What was what was your what was you two's favorite moment from from that game on Sunday? My favorite moment was just seeing the kids happy and how they went and running around the track with the trophy. That was the, and how excited they was. And anything 
with them being happy mm -hmm. is what what gets my juices flowing for me. It's them being happy and being successful. Yeah. Tom, are you? I got two. One after the game, of course, getting that trophy and watching the kids do the lap around the field. And two, my girl right here, she's, a, she's our running back. She's one of our stud athletes. She's as stiff as a board. She got no moves, no dance moves. She got busy in the open field the other day. She started dancing around. She juked a couple kids. And that's what we need her to do, start doing the playoffs, because you ain't going to outrun everybody. Yeah. Sometimes you got to hit him with a juke move, hit him with a stiff arm. So yeah. she's getting busy in the open field. That's big for us. We got the highlights, too, so, yo. <laughs> so make sure you check it out. The th and the thing with Jalexa that – immediately brought me that that I said that I told Paul I have we have to have her was a girl by the name of Devonia Robinson that played for Westland Rams that say that brought us to Florida one year she saved us if she doesn't make a play they play they both play the same position mm -hmm. uh, except for Devonia was more of a fullback tight end and Jalexa is more of a run is definitely more of a runner faster mm -hmm. but um it just seeing her, how she can move and how fast she is, and it just, I said, she's going to DN, that's it. Yep. Um, you know, and then she's strong. She's, she's exceptionally strong, and I mean, it's rare to see. Like, you see girls play football, mm -hmm. but usually you'll see them on the line and they're blocking, and, but this one is a little different. Hey. You gotta be, you gotta be a little different to play football. That's, that's what I would say. Oh, before we get up out of here, please once again tell them the time this weekend playoff game Dorchester. Let them, let the people know. Sunday, eleven o'clock. Be there. It's gonna be a thriller. November seventh. Hey, hey, there you go. Make sure you go out to support these kids. Sunday, November seventh, Dorchester playoff game. This is what it's all about. Man, I want to thank all you kids for coming around here to chat just to be around us. Thank the parents that are over there and some that are in the parking lot. Thank the coaches. We got the city champs in here. Westland City Champs. One more time, make some noise. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we have a saying that we do before, we, um, that we do after practice and after every game. I don't care if they thousand pound boulders. <laughs> There you go. Make sure you flex. Yeah. All right, we out of here. All right, and we are back. All right, oh, the Pop Warners, they got playoffs this, uh, this weekend, or uh, I believe Westland is playing Dorchester at home at 11. I think East Lane is somewhere in Mattapan, I believe. So, uh, yeah, check out those. <clears throat> Make sure you go check those playoff games out, the home games this this Sunday at Manning Field. We got, this should be should be a doozy. Uh, quickly, before we move on to the high school the high school sports stuff, Scotty Pippen, you seen. <laughs> yeah, bro, we already talked about my, that. He sounds like a hater. Definitely sounds like a hater. And here's the thing. Did anything that was said about Scottie Pippen in that documentary, was it a lie? These are stuff that happened. You were the one that begged Jordan to come back. You were the one that decided you're not going to go in for the final shot because the play wasn't dropped for you. You were the one that said you're, gonna, you're not going to get surgery so to, just because you want to enjoy your summer and then you're going to rehab or do it during the season. You were the one that had a migraine during the game, allegedly. I, what else? You were the one that signed that seven-year contract. I was, I was waiting for that. That. The, that the GM told you not to sign is a bad contract. You know, you know what the problem is? Most of these vets, their careers are kind of like not forgotten about, but kind of swept under the rug. Yeah. So his is kind of like was brought back up. And it reminded him of what he, you know, them, that accountability thing. Some people don't want to acknowledge the fact when they mess up and just move on. They, they were trying to hide it. And now he didn't like that. He had to deal with it again. Then him saying that, oh, the Jordan wouldn't be Jordan without, the, without all those, the rest of the guys. Larry Bird called Michael Jordan Jesus after his rookie year. Like, Scotty, what are you doing, man? Just... We get it. You're a little bitter or whatever that you didn't get the accolades. But listen... You got six rings. You got six rings. You played with one of the, probably the greatest. Isn't he top 50? Yeah, you made the top 50 because you played with the top top three player of all time. 
But shout out to my man Tyler Tynes. He's the one that did, that did the story on on uh, yeah, with, just, with Scotty on GQ. Shout the, out you to know, him. Scotty, uh, Scotty ain't been the same since you know my man with the top hat. <laughs> Come on now, <laughs> <laughs> let's be real, bro. He ain't been the same since my top man with the top hat, bro, Mr. Hendricks. <laughs> I just, it, <laughs> Mr. Hendricks. <laughs> Gonna get our behinds. What that one? <laughs> um, um, well, there's some USC and boxing this weekend. Um, big fight. Canel Canelo going for undisputed title. Is that that's right, Pedro? Undisputed title. Yes, 168 pounds. Yeah, he's going for that undisputed. Super he's you go you gonna watch that fight? Oh yeah, I watch it. I mean, I'm gonna try to watch it. He ain't gonna watch it. <laughs> <laughs> My man, I ain't gonna lie. I think I was talking about take. <laughs> Nah, I ain't watching this one. He uh, poked him in the eye, though? Look, I poked. Nah, nah. I uh, guess. Yeah, poke. The dude was talking about his mother. He, oh. talk, he talked about Canelo's oh, mother. Out open and slapped him, too, just yeah, like that. Canelo said, don't be talking about my mama, so that's what happened. But I, uh, from what that, from that press conference, from that, that happened, I don't know how this dude's going to survive Canelo because he already annoyed that you talk about his mama. So he's coming in there with yeah. some anger. I'll be honest. You don't never talk about no black mama, man. Uh, Especially you about to fight him. Right. <laughs> Bob Canelo, I might just purposely get disqualified nah, and put bricks in my glove nah, just cause. Canelo might just, it might be a first round TKO or something. Canelo, like nice, I mean, Canelo is nice like that. Yeah, he, he is nice. Like I forget, you know what it is? That Mayweather loss, people forget. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, yeah. But that Mayweather loss, it was just like the Wiley vet playing against the guy that's yeah. still kind of green. He might have been green yeah. while in, nice. in that fight. But yeah, he's, I mean, you know. Some of, the, some of the whoopings he's, he's put out on people. Uh, but question, if you get disqualified, he keeps his belts, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm just disqualified. That was a rematch. <laughs> and then the other big fight, <laughs> this is kind of a crazy weekend with UFC and boxing both having big pay-per-views, is Usman versus Covington Part 2. Right, that happened the first time. Usman broke that man's jaw. I was going to say, why? And, and this man who's been on that, he's on that MAGA stuff. That, that's his whole platform. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. he been he been talking he been talking crazy to Usman. Oh, he's <laughs> talking again. He was talking crazy to Usman. But, I mean, I'm, I they had a press conference. Usman told him, "I broke your job. I broke your job." <laughs> I mean, what else you need to say? But this is the fight that's gonna be going. He should have said, "You know, I can start from talking again." No, <laughs> this is what he should have said. <laughs> <laughs> just lived it like that, real subtle. Yeah, but it's a big, it's a big weekend in fights and fighting. Uh, I've never seen I, I, I've never seen uh, a big a big time UFC pay per view and a big time boxing pay per view happening the same weekend before. So it's I don't be, think I have either. Yeah, so the avid fighting fight the fighting fans they gonna they gonna be uh, they gonna be torn. Yeah, uh, man, this is gonna be interesting. I'm try to go somewhere to watch this fight. I don't know where I'm gonna be. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, all right, and let's. Let's go to our high school sports update. Okay, first up, we're going to go St. Mary's coach Sean Driscoll's post-game interview. Let's go to that. Coach, what did you say after that first drive to them? Because after that, the defense picked up and it seemed like those well, guys woke up. Well, I'll tell you, you know, it, the, the way they come out and they, they smash the ball around in an eye formation, they come at you downhill. A lot of teams have to settle into the game, especially defensively. See a couple of drives, a couple of plays. They move the ball right down the field. We gave them a short field on not such a great kick. But I literally like the way we bounce back and we uh, came back, especially defensively, making plays. Uh, they're a young team. They're going to be a good team. And they grinded us a little bit at times. But other than that, I'm proud of the way the defense stepped up after uh, last week's performance. Well, how happy were you to get all your guys back, you know, hit that full team back today? Oh, yeah, we're a different football team, uh, you know, tempo-wise and, and, and just speed-wise, a, a different football team. But, uh, but I'll tell you what, our offensive, defensive lines and uh, played a tough, tough game tonight for us and really stepped up. And, like, you know, we preached all week, uh, you know, a setback. You know, good teams come back with a great comeback. So uh, we set ourselves up for that, and now we're on to the playoffs next week. Yeah, now you just wait, uh, wait uh, to see them. Just wait to see how it all shakes out over the weekend. Uh, well, Coach, congratulations. Thank you. Good to see you. Shout out to Coach Driscoll. He's talking them good luck because they <laughs> lost the previous week. So he's like, man, I'm happy to see you. Hey, man. Uh, like, Keep uh, they, they want to share of the, of the league. So they got a first-round playoff matchup with Boston English on Friday at Manning Field. And good luck to you guys. I'm rooting yeah. for y'all. Yeah, this shit should blow by for the first couple rounds. Uh, all right, Lynn English, Jesse Maggs, after the game. He threw three touchdowns on this game. It's 60 to 8. 
All right, Jesse, man, you guys came out here. That's three straight victories for you guys. I feel like it's been like a tale of two seasons for you guys. Yeah. Yeah, just talk, just talk to me about you guys, um, this whole process this season so far. Yeah, so we actually have a bunch of seniors this year. So our first four games, like, they, they didn't really go the way we wanted them to, you know. But ever since then, we, we really flipped the switch where we're not trying to lose again. <laughs> Uh, just talk to me about how you guys came out today uh, offensively. Just talk to me about um, the game plan and what you guys saw out there that made you guys be so effective. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, our offense was very explosive today. We made a lot of guys miss. Um, they dropped back. They they were playing their corners at like 10 yards, disrespecting our outside receivers. So we just took the free access. Not, nothing too crazy. Yeah, and, um, you know, talk, talk about the defense too. You guys, the defense pretty much uh, uh, <laughs> played well all game. Yeah. Well, I'll talk about the defense in the last three games. I think we let up uh, like a combined 16 points. They've really, they've really stepped it up. They've really done their thing. All right, Jesse, you gotta get you out of here. But congratulations on the win. All right, thank you. All right, and uh, lastly, Lintec. We had three of their senior, well, two seniors and one junior after they, it was senior day for them. So uh, you know they they made light work of Minuteman. That was some other stuff, but check this out. All right, fellas, you guys came out senior day with the big with the big dominant victory. Just talk to me about the performance today. Uh, I think today was great. We played as a team. We did the jobs and the assignments that we had to be done. And overall, I think it was a great performance. I think the season should have been a little bit more like this, but I think the younger guys will take on and learn from the mistakes that we made and built for the program. Uh, talk to me about the defense that you guys played. Want to talk about that? Shout out, you know, didn't give them much. I think our defense performed pretty well today. You know, we had some big stops, you know, made some really big plays, blocked a couple punts. We just played all around good. Stand up plays, I would say our D-line. Our D-line did awesome, stopping, stopping their offense from really doing anything. So, uh, and offensively, Tyler, you had the, that first one, you had that big one down there, and then pushed it in, got two touchdowns. I mean, what did you guys do? What did you guys see from their defense that you guys could take advantage of? On that? Uh, they played kind of like a pinch defense, and I feel like overall we blocked them pretty well, performed right, got our assignments, got the job done, executed it, came on here and put the show on, and executed on senior night, right. senior day. What, what's the biggest outlook that you guys? What's the biggest outlook that you guys have taken from this season? Uh, humility, man. I think we came in this season with a big senior team, and we thought we was going to be the best out, and we got ahead of ourselves. So I think being humble was a big part of the season that we're going to take on with the rest of life in general. What about you? I'd have to agree with Alejandro. You know, we came in thinking, oh, we'd win a lot of games. And then we got humbled really quick, and just like we started to gel more together and started to win some games down the road. No, I agree as well. We uh, came out as a unit, and humility was definitely a big part of that. All right, guys, congratulations on the win. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we back. T Tech is playing Hoosack Valley in the playoffs that that school was far. That's all yeah. I know. Yeah, I never even heard of that. Yeah, it's far. Who's that? I don't know, yeah. I don't know Merrimack Valley. Yeah. Camp Academy, they'll be playing Manchester Essex. That they played they played each other during the regular season. Manchester Essex won by a touchdown. And it was actually a great game. I was there. So this one is gonna be in Manchester Essex on Friday. So it should be another good one between those two teams. So shout out to all the teams that made the postseason. Okay, we got some Pop Warner football highlights for everyone. So this is Eastland 12U with Westland 10U, the 12U, I should say, the best game of that day with uh, Eastland coming out with the 27-26 win. But yeah, this game was pretty great. So check out these highlights.
Thomas Allen. And we are back. All right, before we we go to our top plays of the high school football highlights, and then we're going to close this thing out. And we are back. Okay, NBA top 10 plays. Check these out. NBA top 10, <laughs> that was NBA top 10 plays, NFL top 10 plays, and we all come with our game picks. <laughs>
All right, and we are back, and it's time for our week number nine game picks. Uh, week eight, Todd went nine and six, and I went an abysmal five and ten. Man, it was. Bro, I gotta do a slip, bro. This is ridiculous. I just bad. need four games. It was a bad. It was a bad week for me, man. It was. That one's terrible. And I, I always think I'm doing awful because I only focus on the losses. <laughs> All right. Thursday night football. We have the J-E-T-S Jets, Jets, Jets at the Colts. I'm going to go with the Jets, man. I can't the watch Jets. the Colts. Yeah, I'm going to go. I'll go with the Jets just because the Colts, they'll be in games, and then their quarterback will just do some, something dumb. After, <laughs> like, playing well all game, he'll just do something dumb. Yep. <laughs> yep. Cleveland at Cincinnati. Browns. Bengals. Denver at Dallas. 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 Houston at Miami. Miami. Dolphins. Atlanta at New Orleans. New Orleans. Saints, yeah. Vegas at Giants. Ugh. I don't. You know what? I think the Raiders are going to bounce back. I think I'm going to take the Giants on this one. Pats, you know, they're playing the Panthers. Buffalo Jaguars. Yeah. Buffalo. Yeah, Bills. Minnesota at Baltimore. Ravens. Ravens. Chargers at Eagles. Chargers. I'm going to go with the Eagles. See, that's why I had to pause. <laughs> Green Bay at Kansas City. Green Bay got Justin Love as their starting quarterback. Yeah, he's going to go Kansas City. Yeah. They got to get a win at some point. I agree. Chiefs. Zona. Arizona at San Fran. Arizona. San Fran. Tennessee at Los Angeles. Oh, yeah, Rams. Yeah, Rams. Chicago at Pittsburgh. Monday Night Football. Pittsburgh. Yeah, I'm going with Pittsburgh as well. And that is it. Thank you all for watching. Oh, before we get out of here, big congratulations to my cousin, Jordy. He's on the NBA G League with, the, with Cleveland. He, just, he signed. He just signed this week. He's out there. So congratulations Dope. to him. He's been, he's been going hard for that. Um, also, it's my pop's birthday this weekend. So happy birthday to my pops. Just hopefully he's uh, keeping it in his pants. I'm joking. <laughs> He ain't. Nah, nah, he, yeah, he, he ain't. ain't my, uh, <laughs> he got his birthday suit on right now. Ah, uh, man, yeah. Happy, uh, happy birthday to my pops. We are going to get out of here before we say something that gets us canceled. <laughs> have a great weekend. <laughs> yeah, have a good one.